All right, hey, I, I want to take just a couple minutes and uh, talk about the evolution of the bipod on sniper rifles. Uh, in, in particular, I want to talk about the line of bipods from uh, B&T Industry. All right, so we all started off with the basic old Harris Ultralight bipod. It, they still come on a lot of modern guns. I'm not bashing the Harris bipods at all, not at all. Um, but when we would have them on our guns, right, we would always have to, they'd have to be mounted facing in that direction, and then you'd have to fold the legs forward, which then stuck out you know, along the sides of your barrel. So if you were going through the woods, that was gonna get hung up on something. Uh, if you were parachuting with it, again, it's something sticking forward of the stock. You really want that thing tight up against the stock. Um, so we would want the legs to fold back, you know, like our machine gun ones do. However, if you folded, if you mounted the, the Harris backwards, okay, um, so it, it was like that, what ended up happening when you leaned into that, the back of that stock, when you went to go load that rifle, what would happen is that, that stock would fold on you and your barrel would drop into the ground, you get dirt in the end of your muzzle and uh, you lose all your cool points. So it can only be mounted in one direction. All right, fast forward a little bit, and um, this guy named Casey Belts came, he, he saw that there were, it's a good bipod, but he saw that there were things that could be improved on it. So what he, what he built was this, this is one of the original versions of the Atlas bipod. The legs would be pulled and they come down to the side. All right, so his bipod still had tilt, just like the newer versions of the Harris's had. But one feature that Casey added was uh, pan. His bipod, you could actually pan the gun left and right, which for me, when I'm trying to track moving targets, uh, that alone made this thing a, a winner for me. So one other feature his has is, remember I just mentioned my problem with the Harris was the legs could only be forward. If you mounted them backwards, uh, the gun would fall down. His could fold in either direction. It didn't matter. He had slots cut so you could fold it back like, a, like the bipod on a saw or a 240 and it wouldn't waste any extra space, wouldn't get hung up on brush. Well, Casey took it a step farther. Now, instead of having different height bipods, the, the short Harris, the medium Harris, the tall Harris, uh, he decided, well, if I need, if this one was too tall, if I put it at a 45, Right there, if I had it at a 45, now it's lower than it would have been. These legs are a little bit lower. Now if you needed it longer, you could pull down on this collar and you could micro adjust the ends of these legs. Same thing if it was lower down. This, this bipod gets quite tall. Uh, solid built, uh, if the pan and tilt was too loose for you, it had a, a knob on the bottom so you could tighten it up. Versions with throw levers, versions without throw levers, depending on what you, the user, needed. So that's the first generation. Now he added several newer ones. Uh, this particular one, you notice he got away from pulling the legs down to extend them like he did on that version, and he went to a push button. Now it still has, you can lock it at the 45s, all right? Um, but you have to push the button. Collar's a little easier to grab. Still works the same way, micro adjustable. Now you notice these have got points on them instead of the rubber shoes. Now it still takes the rubber shoes, okay? Um, but he's got, if you look right here, see the little hole? All you do is take the tip of a bullet, stick it in that hole, and these feet uh, pull right off so you can remove that rubber shoe. And you can put on either the, the uh, point or he's got these flat sand shoes also, and they've got teeth. They'll dig in a, like a wood tabletop. They're good in the snow. It gives you a little wider footprint for your rifle. Nice improvement, uh, available in different colors depending on what the contract was. And again, it still had pan and tilt both. A big step up. Now you notice these legs do ro rotate. Now there were users that were complaining about that. Now, Casey doesn't take these things as complaints. He takes them as constructive criticism. The shooters were saying they didn't want them to rotate because with the feet, the, the 
bipod was actually walking forward on the ground when people were loading hard uh, against it. So what he did was he started making a version that does not rotate. The legs do not rotate left and right. So everything else works exactly the same. Still push button, you can still drop it to the 45, available in different heights. Pan and tilt, uh, great, great bipod. All the parts are interchangeable, feet, everything. Now, again, more, uh, not so much constructive criticism, but people reaching out saying, Casey, that's awesome. Can you make it a little bit bigger so I can put it on our 50 cal sniper rifles, on our 338 Lapuas, things like that. So he started with just a larger, heavier version, but what he found was it raised the gun too high. The, your, the lower the center of gravity is on the weapon system, uh, the better you're gonna be for recoil management and the quicker you're gonna be able to get that next shot off. So what he came up with is, um, the 5H. Now you'll notice this is a different, completely different design. Rather than, if you look where the apex would have been, rather than that barrel and that being way up here, by him cutting the loop down bottom, now he's lowered the gun closer to the ground. But look how much wider that footprint is. This is much heavier. You can still do 45 degrees in every direction. You can still do 90 degrees in every direction. And this this thing really does uh, extend to a very, very wide footprint for those 50 cal rifles. You could use this on a saw. Uh, now it still has pan and tilt, pan, tilt this way. Now, if you wanted to shorten it down a little bit, all you'd have to do is tighten this knob. It actually has clicks in it. Go left to right, three clicks one way, three clicks the other way. And then take this throw lever, throw it back, and you can adjust how much friction there, uh, you have in there. Now, there were some people that were saying, Casey, can you make us a version that does not have any pan or does not have any tilt? Uh, what he did with every one of these uh, 5Hs comes with this tool. You screw it in the front and you tighten it down and it completely takes out the uh, tilt capability, tighten it down a little bit more and it takes the pan out. So great, great feature. I can't say enough about this product. It's what I'm running on my personal 338 now. Great, great uh, bipod system from my initial idea all the way up through the latest generation. All right, so if you have any questions or comments about any of the generations of the uh, Atlas Bipod all the way up to the 5H, just uh, let me know or put your questions and comments below.